If you've ever had trouble finding accurate tabs for your 12-hole ocarina, then keep watching, because today I'm going to show you everything you need to know to start reading sheet music. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey back amigos, my name is David and welcome back to How to Play Ocarina. This is the second part in this series which goes alongside my new book of the same name. All the information we're going to be discussing is included in the book along with some diagrams, fingering charts, more exercises, everything you need to know to start playing. So if you'd like to have that information on hand or skip ahead in the series at any point, be sure to grab that book at davideericramos.com store where you can follow along or just continue along with this video series by subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you know whenever I post a new episode. So before we get started, I just want to give a few notes. First of all, that it's okay if you have never had any sort of formal music training or lessons or any introduction to music theory whatsoever. That's what this entire video is for. And the reason why I find that this information is important as opposed to just sticking with Ocarina tabs is that Ocarina tabs seem to be lacking a few major features when it comes to reading music for your Ocarina. The biggest problem with Ocarina tabs is rhythm. The tablature doesn't show exactly how long you're supposed to hold a note or when you're supposed to come in. Any of that information that has to do with timing is neglected when it comes to tabs. Also excluded from Ocarina tabs are things like key signatures which give you a hint as a player to know which notes you're supposed to be playing and if there's any accidentals involved. Some of those terms might be a little bit hard to understand now, but as we go through the series, you're gonna be so happy that you dove in and took on this challenge to improve yourself musically. So to get started, there are a few important symbols when it comes to music, the first being the staff. The staff is a series of five lines that are stacked on top of each other, and each of those lines and the spaces between the lines represent different pitches. For example, if we put a note on the bottom line and we wanted to play a higher pitch, we could put a note the line above that or in the space above that. Because there are a variety of different instruments, some that are really high and some that are really low, we also have different sets of these staffs for the different types of instruments, and those are each separated by something called a clef. For higher pitch instruments, we use something called a treble clef. For lower instruments, we use something called a bass clef. And then we also have an alto clef for instruments like the viola. Because the ocarina is a higher instrument, we're gonna be using the treble clef for the remainder of this series. Now that we know which clef we're gonna be using for the ocarina, let's go ahead and learn all the pitches that are associated with the treble clef. And don't worry if you don't get all this right now because we're gonna be breaking this down and reintroducing all these points throughout the series. So pitch is basically how we distinguish the lower notes from the higher notes. That's the easiest way to describe it. And in the West, we use something called the musical alphabet. These are seven pitches that repeat over and over again from really low notes to really high notes, and they are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now when we place this on the staff, they look like this. The notes on the lines being E, G, B, D, F, and the notes in the spaces being F, A, C, E. Now you might notice that F, A, C, E spells face, so that's how we easily remember the notes within the spaces. And then on the lines, we use a mnemonic device, or every good boy does fine, is probably the easiest way to memorize those pitches. Now a good thing to note about Ocarina's Tune to C is that they can actually play all the notes on the staff, and even go a few notes below the staff, and we can designate these notes by using these little lines called ledger lines. The note below the lowest line, which is E, is D, and then we can add one ledger line to give us C, Underneath that ledger line is B, and then one more ledger line to give us the low A, which is both sub holes closed on your ocarina. For the first couple lessons, we're only going to go down to that first ledger line with C, and later on in the series when we cover sub holes, we'll go down to that low A. Now again, don't worry about memorizing all this right now because every single lesson we're going to introduce a few notes at a time along with the different finger positions so that you can memorize it a whole lot easier. Now let's talk about rhythm, which is a huge perk of reading sheet music over ocarina tabs, because again, ocarina tabs have a difficult time of displaying how long you're supposed to hold each note. So what is rhythm? Rhythm is basically how we keep time in music. More specifically, it is a cycle of beats that repeat over and over again. For example, you've probably counted to four in a song. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, like a dance. We use these repeated cycles in music to help us measure the time, and the best way to do this is by breaking down music into these sections called bars or measures. So with the staff, we're gonna add these bar lines or measure lines to break it down into, let's say, four measures. And a minute ago, I was counting four beats, and this is actually the most common cycle we have in music. So let's go ahead and use that by adding another symbol to the staff called the time signature. And the time signature has two numbers. The top number tells you how many beats you want in each measure, and the bottom number tells you what kind of note gets that beat which we'll talk about more in depth in a minute. Now technically you can have any number you want for the top number, but the higher that number, the more complicated it'll be to keep track of the beats. For example, if you replace it with a three, then you'll simply have a three note cycle, 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But if you replace it with a number like 12, then you have something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So now that we know that each measure has a certain number of beats, let's talk about the different types of beats that there are in a measure, and those are called notes. So let's say that we have a time signature of four, four, which means that we have four beats in a measure, and you wanna play one pitch for all four of those beats in a measure. Then you would play something called the whole note, which looks like this. If you wanted to play two pitches within a measure, then you would break that whole note into two half notes. And if you wanted to divide each of those in half to play four beats in a measure, they would become quarter notes. And you can see how each one just looks a little bit different as we become smaller and smaller. Now going back to time signatures, remember when I talked about the bottom number? Well, the bottom number refers to one of these types of notes. Each of these notes can be identified by a number. Whole notes are one, half notes are two, quarter notes are four, eighth notes are eight. So a four, four time signature would mean that there are four quarter notes per measure. That means that any notes you have in a single measure must be equal to four quarter notes. So we'll talk more about that in a later lesson. Okay, I know that was a lot of information for one video, but you have a whole week to review before our next lesson. And in the next lesson, we'll be learning the first five pitches for your ocarina. Again, if you'd like to grab a copy of my book, How to Play Ocarina, the link is in the description below, which includes all this information and more, so be sure to check that out. A very special thank you to my patrons for making these videos possible. And if you'd like to help support these tutorials as well, be sure to check out my Patreon page where you can download MP3s, backtracks, sheet music, a whole bunch of rewards, all available at patreon.com slash docjazz4. So thank you for checking that out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in our next lesson.